Again, welcome to Mathematical Structure for Computer Science, CS113 at Pace University, also known as Discrete Mathematics. In this lecture, we're going to continue with the chapter two of our course textbook. And the topic today is cardinality of set sets. Again, chapter two cover sets, and we have up to eight sections. This is section five. So our main objective is to go through what is cardinality, countable sets, and computability. So we start with the definition of cardinality. Here we say cardinality of a set A is equal to the cardinality of set B, which is donated as a absolute A equal to absolute B. If and only if there is one-to-one -one correspondence, that's a, a bijection from A to B. And also if there's again one-to-one -one function that is an injection from A to B, the cardinality of A will be less than or the same as cardinality of B. And we write this as A is less than or equal to B. Now, so if we have a bijection from A to B, uh, it means again that cardinality of A is equal to cardinality of B, set A and set B. But if it's injection, the cardinality of A is less than or equal to cardinality of B. In our previous section, we talked about what is a cardinality of a set. So the cardinality of a set is the number of elements the set has. So here we say when A, set A is less than or equal to B, and A and B have different cardinality, we say that the cardinality of A is less than the cardinality of B, and we write this as A is less than B. And so a set that is either finite or has the same cardinality as a set of positive integer is called a countable. So a set that has either finite or has the same cardinality as a set of positive integers so it's from one positive value one, two, three up. It's called a countable. So a set that is not countable is called uncountable. So a set of a real numbers is an uncountable set. And a set of a positive integers that's from one, two, three is again countable set. So when an infinity set is countable, that's a countable infinity. Its cardinality is uh, N O, where N is uh, Aleph, the first letter of Hebrew alphabet. So, again, when an infinity set is countable, the countability infinity, its cardinality is Aleph, where again the Aleph is the first Hebrew alphabet. So, we write the set as equal to Aleph. -O. That is S as a cardinality of a left node. Now, showing that a set is countable, here we say that an infinity set is countable if and only if it's possible to list the element of the set in sequence, in sequence, indexed by positive integers. So, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 2, 4, 6, 8, as far as we can list again the element in sequence of the set in sequence. So the reason for this is that a one-to-one -one correspondence f from the set of a positive integers to set s can be expressed in terms of a sequence. So here we can have a1, a2 up to an, where a1 is f at a, a2 is f at 2, an is f at a. So this is an example of a Herbert Grand Hotel. Here we say the Grand Hotel, as an, the example is by David Herbert, has a countable infinity number of rooms. So each room occupied by a guest, we can also accommodate a new guest at this hotel. How is it possible? Here we are using the term that is inf infinity number of rooms, uh, which means the rooms will never get full, always there's a space. So the explanation given here is that because the rooms of the Grand Hotel are countable, 
we can list them as room one, two, three, and so on. Now, when a new guest arrives, we'll move the guest in room one to room two, and the guest in room two to room three, and in general, the guest in room n to n plus one for all positive integer n. This will free up the room one, which we assign to the new guests and all the current guests still have rooms. Uh, they will take a, a also accommodate a countable number of guests, all the guesses on a countable number of buses where each bus contains a countable number of guesses. So here we are saying that the hotel rooms is infinity countable. Now, when a new guest arrives, we move the guests in the first room to the second, the second to third, third to fourth, and we keep going. Now, showing that a set is countable, let's see this example one. Show that a set of a positive even integer E is countable set. So we have a even two, four, six, eight, ten. So solution is let F at S equal to two X. So this is countable, we can see. Uh, this is even integers because we start from one, two times one is two, two times two is four, two times three is uh, six, two times four is eight, five is 10, two times six is 12, and the list keep going. So this is a countable again set. So show that a set of positive even integer E is countable set. Now we say then if F is a bijection from N to E. Since F is both one to one and onto, to show that it is one to one, suppose that F at N equal to F at N, then two times N equal to two times N, and so N equal to N. And to see that it is onto, suppose that T is an even positive integer, then T equal to two K or two times K for positive integer k and f at k equal to two. So the whole concept again is that we want to show that a set of positive even integer e is countable. So positive integer means we start from one, two, three, or the way. We multiply by two, so x will be our uh, values from one, two, three, up. And we can see that again, the result is countable, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Example two show that the set of integer z is countable. So the set of integer z is countable. It means including the negative values. Z positive means only the positive real numbers. So we can list the list as 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3. Or can be defined a bijection from n to z. Now when n is even number, we get n divided by two, and when n is odd number, we get negative n minus one over two. So n will be our values. So now the next is uh, positive rational numbers are countable. So first, what is a rational number? A rational number can be expressed as a ratio of two integer p and q such that q not equal to zero. Always, when we are dividing two values, the denominator will never be zero, otherwise, we get an error. So, a rational number example can be 3 4 is a rational number, but square root of 2 is not a rational number. But square root of 2, let's say, divided by 5 or square root of 5 is a rational number. So, a rational number, as we say, can be expressed as a ratio of two integers, p by q, and q will never be zero. So example three, they say we should show that the positive rational numbers are countable. So positive rational numbers are countable since they can be arranged in sequence, they are countable. So we can get R1 to R3. Uh, example will be here. We can get here, we start from one by one, two by one, three by three. This is countable, we can arrange them. Oh, this is another sequence here. Now we talk about strings. In programming language, strings is one of the common uh, data type. A string normally consists of one or more characters, or sometimes a new string means empty string. So here they say we should show that 
the set of finite string S over finity alphabet is Canterbury infinity. Uh, here you see uh, a set of string is not infinity because we know the characters will be from A to Z. But I show that a set of finity string S over finity alphabet A is Canterbury infinity is possible because uh, we can miss the characters infinity we have from a to z 26 characters but we can miss them up and form many words and infinity so assuming an alphabetical order of the symbols in a here the so we should show that the strings can be listed in a sequence first list all the strings of length zero in alphabetical order then all the strings of length two in less so called graphic this will be like dictionary order then all the string of uh, length three will be the same and so on. So this will be infinity. This applies to a bijection from N to S and S it is countable infinity set. And the set of all Java programs is countable. So, so example five, so we should show that the set of all Java programs is countable. Here we say let S be the set of strings constructed from characters which can appear in the Java program. Now use the ordering from the previous example, take each string in 10. We can feed the string into a Java compiler. Again, a Java compiler will determine if the input program is synthetically correct Java program. Now, if the compiler says yes, this synthetically correct Java program, we had the program to the list, then we keep move on to the next link uh, till we finish. So in this way, we construct an implied digestion from N to the set of Java program. Hence, the set of Java programs is countable. Again, we may solve more problems on this in our chapter, again, chapter two, homework assignments. And this is another example, the real numbers are uncountable. Uh, here they say we should show that the set of real numbers is uncountable, which is true uh, because we can arrange them. And they, so let's go to the method. It's called Carton, Carton Diagonalization Argument and it's proved by contradiction. So suppose R is countable, then the real number is between 0 to 1 and also, are also countable. countable. Any subset of a countable set is also countable. Then the real number between 0 and 1 can be listed in order uh, R1, R2, R3, etc. Then let the decimal representation of this list be is giving R1, R2, and R3. We can form a new real number with the decimal expansion. And we have R1, R2, R2, R4. We can say Ri is 3 if d i i not equal to three uh, so again then the then we keep going here so here we can say that r is not equal to any of the r1 r2 r3 because it differ from r i in its i position after the decimal point therefore there's a red number between zero and one and that is not on the list Everything. Again, we're going to solve and exercise questions on this and hopefully we can get more examples. So what is a computability? We say that a function is computable if we have a programming language or a computer program in any programming language that can find the value of that function. So a function can be uncomputable. Again, in computer science, we may have some problems that a computer cannot solve it. It's uncomputable. So if, if we say that function is computable, if there's a computer program in some programming language that can find the values of this function. If the function is not computable, we say it is uncomputable. So there are uncomputable functions. And we have shown that a set of Java program is countable. So there's a, a question in our textbook exercise 38. 
uh, shows that there are uncountable many different functions from particular countability infinity set. Uh, we may again discuss about this problem in our next lectures. So this will be the conclusion of our topic. Uh, again, here we try to get the concept of cardinality of sets, uh, countable, countable and uncountable, computable and uncomputable functions. Again, we will do exercise problems and we will go through more details about the, uh, the, the assist the practical aspect of it. So again, wish everybody the best and thank you.